You're listening to the New World To Go podcast with your hosts, Redbird and BDLG. Hello and welcome to another episode of New World To Go. I'm your host, Redbird, and with me is BDLG. Yeah. What's up, yeah, dude? Yeah, dude. I don't know, How are you, man? man. Everything's yeah. great. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Great. We got we got patch notes to dive into. It's going to be a great episode. I'm excited. Bordy's excited. Uh, so we're going to hop right in there. But first, guys, check out the Studio Loot YouTube channel. We're firing up videos, dude. Five times a week. It's it's insane over there. Really. Uh, we are. Uh, it's you know we're. I'm having fun, dude. It's fun to do YouTube with somebody else because as most people who do YouTube know, YouTube can be grindy. So it's fun to do it with you, man. Um, and yeah, we we we're putting up New World videos multiple times a week, uh, including vods of New World to go. So if you haven't checked out our YouTube channel, go over there, hit the sub button, have fun, enjoy the videos. Um, look at our beautiful bald heads. Right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. man. I and our, couldn't have said it better our, myself. And our, yeah. our manly facial hairs. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, let's get in here, Bordy. Uh, this is going to be a decent sized episode. Uh, first, we'll tease the company of the week is the Clover Kingdoms. We're going to talk about that obviously after our discussion. Uh, so hang tight for that. We appreciate them. Um, and let's go. Let's go, dude. Uh, all right, man. So it's called the Forge and Fury update, Bordy. Uh, the last one we had was Reekwater, of course. We did a lot of coverage extensively and exclusively on that. So here we go, buddy. Uh, Forge and Fury, the December update. We called it. I want to point that out to you guys and, and Patty uh, ourselves on the back. We knew it was coming, and, and it happened to come in the exact week that we called it out, dude. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's not like they said they were going to do these regularly or anything hey, like man, that. Hey, you man, know? listen, dude. When you say stuff like that, it takes away from the effect of us calling, you know, the Babe Ruth. We, we did the Babe Ruth, and then you just kind of belittled it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? I just try not to take credit where credit's not due. You I'm know what I mean? Like, credit. I just try to be, you know. I'm just saying we did it. We, call it, we said it, and then it happened. Okay. It's factual. All okay. right. All right. So, let's see, dude. Obviously... The first main thing that they added in the game, dude, is the Great Axe, a new weapon. I'm I, Every time they add a weapon, I, it makes me extremely excited that the ver, the builds in the game and, and the diversity in the game is going to be that much better. Uh, so now, obviously, we have the Great Axe. The Great Axe is a two-handed melee weapon that excels at large sweeping attacks while training with the Great Axe. Uh, adventurers will be able to progress into two mastery trees. Obviously, uh, all weapons have two mastery trees. The ones on the Great Axe are the Marauder, a weapon mastery tree focuses on high damage and multi-hit abilities to hack and slash your way through foes. Now, Bordy, you're an axe guy. You know, Not a Great Axe guy, though. Uh, yeah, uh, but not a Great Axe guy. Okay, you're... My, I like I like I like because I just don't like big slow weapons like that, man. You know, I like to run around with like a one-handed axe and a shield or like the hatchet in the preview event, which I didn't use a ton because everybody was complaining about and said it was too crazy. So I didn't use it a lot during the preview event because of that. Fair. But I like that more. Like I like a fast and a fast and hard play style more than a uh, really slow, like hard hitting. I just I don't enjoy that. That's why I didn't really use the big hammer too much either, you know. Yeah, I would imagine like though a- that berserker huh? guy you know what i'm saying yeah, this seems like a berserker a, weapon I, I mean kind of i guess i think in new world it's gonna be a little bit slower though you know like okay. it's gonna be a real slow weapon i mean i've already used the hammer in the preview i think this can be very similar to that in terms of like pacing and how fast you swing the weapon yeah. but i do think this weapon is gonna be like a spin to win weapon you know what i mean especially then the marauder yeah. tree it says right here that and high damage and multi-hit abilities to hack yeah. and slash your way through foes so it'll probably be a pretty fun like aoe uh, a weapon to use um you know we have we have the uh the hammer which is more focused on like cc i think this is going to be like aoe damage which is going to be pretty dope i think yeah uh, that'll be cool yeah 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 and, and we needed something like this uh and you'll see why we we talked a little bit about tanking and healing especially in one of our videos on on the youtube channel uh so this one uh it, we said that the game definitely needs more weapons that will help you keep aggro and t- and tank to kind of build that diversity uh, from just the sword and shield 
build, and they did it, dude. The Reaper Tree. The Reaper Weapon Mastery Tree focuses on crowd control and escape prevention. These skills will help you control the flow of battle with your allies, dispatch, uh, while your allies, excuse me, dispatch those who have been caught in your grasp. So, dude, that just screams tanking to me. Yeah, I would imagine so. I think that there'll be probably a lot of perks you can add to this thing to generate threat, I would think. And I would think that this, if you go down the Reaper tree, I would imagine that you're going to be going down, a, you know, more of a tanking tree. The Marauder tree is going to be more of a, maybe a, maybe a DPS, you know, melee DPS type of tree. But I think the Reaper is, yeah, I agree. I think it's going to be tank. Yeah, it'd be cool. Maybe there's some synergy between the two trees that uh, yeah. allow you to use AOE sweeping abilities to taunt or CC or pull into your, your guys. So, uh, dude, I'm glad that they added something like this. I think the game definitely needs it. Hopefully it's not the last tanking type of tree that we see in these weapons. Um, it's hard to imagine maybe like a pistol and shield could be a tanking type of thing. Maybe uh, that'd be kind of cool. A range tanky thing. Who knows what they'll add. Um, but I'm glad they added something else, obviously. So the great Yeah, me too. So the oh, great, what you, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. I was just gonna keep going. What do you want what do you yeah, want? Yeah, no, I think that you're gonna read off exactly what I was about to say. So I uh, go ahead. Okay. The great axe yeah. will have two crafted weapon perks specific to it, in addition to the perks that are broadly applicable to other weapons. So this is interesting, man, because uh, I and and I guess I kind of used the rule, the rule that there aren't going to have like a something extremely unique just on great axes only have like two perks that are specific to that weapon. So it's going to be interesting to see that now I would assume all weapons will have maybe uh, at least a number of unique perks that are only on those weapons, which would be pretty cool. Yeah, this is the first time we've seen any mention of that. I think before perks were kind of broad. Uh, I don't yeah. know that we've ever seen anything that says two like crafted perks very specific to each weapon. Or if we have, then maybe I've been living under a rock. I don't know. But I haven't seen that uh, to my knowledge. So I think that's pretty exciting, man. I like that. A little bit more diversity with the builds. I'm all about it. Yeah, I mean, uh, dude, I, again, I you know I say this a lot on the podcast. I say again a lot on the podcast. But I also say... That, uh, dude, diversity is where this game is going to excel. Um, you know, the fact that there are cl it's a classless system, they need more things or more weapons, I guess, is how they're kind of, uh, at, at least at this point, um, showing the difference between build to build and, and player to player. Uh, the more weapons, the merrier, and I'm glad that they uh, got this in here. And the talents, obviously, are pretty exciting, too, because... Uh, the fact that the, the great axe, they can uh, take a little bit more liberty with those talents, right? If they're just on the great axe, that would kind of uh, allow them to like use the strength of the great axe without like breaking some other weapon, which is pretty cool. Yeah. All right. So uh, real quick, the legendary great axe quest, we kind of see a legendary weapon uh, quest for each of the weapon uh, types. Uh, so this kind of details how you're going to do that. Level 60 adventurers can speak to Ranger Herb in the Eden Grove to begin this quest. Uh, re recover the multiple uh, components needed to create this powerhouse and deliver it to Ranger. I like the, and this is something back from um, my EverQuest days. I like these extensive legendary quests, man, that you know when someone walks up in a town with this bad boy on that he did a lot of uh, crazy things to get it. I like that, and I'm glad that they have something like that in New World. Yeah, I like it too, man. It definitely adds some flavor to the game, and it's just additional content that you can go do whenever you want a specific legendary weapon. I love it, man. I think that's great. And I like that they add a new legendary quest with every weapon that they add. It's good stuff. Yeah, just at least additional one. content. I'm here for it, man. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. All right, dude. Next topic. Maybe our favorite topic oh, ever on any go, podcast dude. ever. PvP duels. Let's go. Dude, we requested this a lot. And there and what's crazy is during the preview event, there was tons of dueling, like people just waiting outside of um, of uh, the um, settlements. Brightwood. Yeah, Bright, yeah, Brightwood or or Everfall or wherever, waiting outside, dueling. Uh, different factions were out there, uh, you know, just like waiting to fight each other. And now there's an organized way to do that, man. And not just for dual duels, like one on one. But these duels can go up to five players per side. So there's literally group dueling, dude. 
I love it, dude. I, this was incre- this this was so unexpected to me. I did not expect to see duels in the patch notes this month. I was hoping they were going to bring them in before release. I definitely yeah. did not expect this to happen now. And I, dude, whenever I seen this, I was smiling so hard. Whenever I seen PvP duels, whenever I read through this the first time, I was so excited. I thought this was even. I mean, you would think duels, what a simple thing, but uh, there are games out there that don't have it. And Man. this was such a highly requested feature, and it works so well in New World just being able to duel is so much fun in the game i'm so glad they put this in man i'm so glad so uh duels can be initiated by players over level 10 regardless of faction or pvp flag status so we can duel each other that's uh, perfect uh duels cannot be initiated in settlements or during wars or invasions that's good to know uh players can I- initiate a duel by hovering over another player's name in chat or in social menu and and then clicking invite to duel uh, outside in, uh, interference will end a duel, which obviously, I don't know if you're flagged for PVP already and someone else kind of like third, you know, uh, third teams you or whatever, uh, I guess that would end the duel or if you get attacked by a monster or something, I wonder if that will end a duel as well. Uh, but you can duel solo or in groups, like we mentioned of up to five people. Uh, dude, I, and like you had mentioned, dude, it's just in- reassuring to see them adding PVP features to the game. So many um, MMOs uh, in today's age stray away from PvP entirely. Uh, so it's really cool for them to add this feature, to see them add this feature. And hopefully this is a way to train for some other, like maybe arena type. Uh, yeah, maybe. Because up to five players per side is very interesting to me, man. I don't know of too many of too many games that you can duel, like team duel yeah. like that. That's really cool. I, I really, really like that. I don't that, know man. of so- one. Other than New World, which is really cool to yeah. have this unique feature. Yeah, I don't know if I do either. Uh, that I'm, th- you know, I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't think so. Any, I mean, any MMO that I've played, I don't think it has ever had like a team dueling in there. It's really cool, man. I'm excited to see how that how that plays out. It's going to be fun. Like you and I can go two v two some people. We can get our company together hey. and go five v five another company or whatever. That's it's going to be cool. awesome, man. Uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. It I is, can't wait. It dude. is going to be dope. I, like you, was just, oh man, so good to see that uh, in the patch notes and, and confirm it. We don't have to wonder anymore. There's going to be dueling in New World, and, and that's spectacular. All right, so shield updates, Bordy. A new type of shield, a tower shield, uh, and some interesting um, facts or changes around shield mechanics. Uh, unleash your inner uh, legionary with the new tower shield, the biggest and most powerful shield in New World to date. Uh, the tower shield can tank all but the greatest of blows from enemies. So, dude, massive shield, and and you wonder, uh, or I wondered as I read the the um, addition of the tower shields, well, what's going to stop everybody from equipping a tower shield if it provides the most amount of defense? And we'll kind of learn later on uh, that there are updates to shield mechanics. Obviously, there's going to be a legendary tilt uh, tower shield quest uh, that people level 60s can go do, um, and, and it happens to also be in Eden Grove, which is on. Um, but, uh, so here are the updated shield mechanics. So we've updated the way shields work for both armor and equipment calculations too. Shields now add to your armor in addition to block chance. So that's a big buff to shields, Bordy. Um, because not, not only are you going to have a higher armor rating, but you're also going to, uh, you know, uh, obviously it's going to add some sort of percentage to your, um, uh, blocking chance as well. Yeah, which which is fine, I think, because of these next couple of points here. So I'm going to let you keep reading on. All right, so this is a, an important one as well. Shields now always contribute to your total equipment weight. Now, we know bucklers or, or kite shields and now tower shields all have different equip or actual weights. Uh, that you, it, they didn't, it was never f- affecting your total like lightweight, medium, or heavy type where your character can, you know, it reduces your mobility. Um, that never affected that until now. So this is a big thing, Bordy, for builds, uh, because you can no longer, or it doesn't seem like you can, uh, you can no longer equip a shield, uh, and, and not have it affect your, you know, your total uh, mobility, which is interesting. 
Yeah, which seems like they're either going to have to adjust some of the weights of a lot of the armor pieces in the game, or if they don't do that and you equip a shield, you're I don't think you'll ever be in the lightweight category unless you just run shield and that's it maybe, uh, which I don't know. You know, I don't know, man. I, I, this, this is incredibly interesting because it pushes you more towards that tank mechanic because if you're going to run a shield, then you're, you might as well just go ahead and go full on heavy armor, I would imagine, and 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 go tank you know yeah if it's going to affect you, especially you know the equip weight of some of these shields could be enough to where like you literally have to be naked to not <laughs> you know or you have to wear complete light armor um to have them equipped and not you know be in a heavy status so we will see obviously these these uh <laughs> these uh tower shields are probably the biggest and the most weighty shields that you can equip so i definitely don't think anybody's gonna be running these that's not a tank Right, which is why I think that having the tower shield as the most powerful shield in New World in terms of blocking and armor that it provides is fine because I would imagine that it's going to be very heavy. So I think that you're going to lose a lot of mobility because you're going to get thrown into the heavy armor uh, weight class uh, probably you know, very easily by equipping that thing. Look at that picture, though, dude. It, look at the tower shield. Look how cool it looks, man. Yeah, it's, it's huge. It's a beast. It looks awesome, man. I love it. It looks really and cool. It's, uh, it's uh, one of the uh, screenshots on on the NewWorld.com website. So some shield checking some pirate uh, with the tower shield, which is pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah, dude, uh, it'll be cool to see people swinging that thing around. And, and uh, like, like we had mentioned before, it'll... Who knows? Maybe they'll develop develop a shield skill tree. I know it's kind of tied into sword and shield right now, um, but who knows? As they develop more and more, there may even be a unique uh, shield skill tree. Uh, but it'll be interesting to see how they, you know, if they work out dual wielding, what that looks like, and then obviously if they do work out a, sh a shield tree um with that type of feature what it looks like when you actually have to choose between what trees you're going down so uh we shall yeah, see for sure it's interesting to think about adding a shield tree into the game so yeah yeah that'd be cool i think um all right dude so now we have combat so the combat systems we made some large changes to address combat feedback from the preview event for more details and and we covered this in I know you guys uh, hate us for doing this, but uh, YouTube channel, <laughs> we, we have a video just on those uh, the visions of combat, which are very reassuring. And we talk a lot about combat on this on this podcast, how important it is for an MMO in general. And, and they made a lot of good statements about the vision of combat and how they're not going to stray away from action combat and skilled based combat, which was awesome, dude. It was I, I had fun um, talking about that because Dude, we were both a little bit concerned about the changes that they're making overall to the game and how they're pushing it in an MMO direction. And we were worried that they would also try to do the combat that way too. And it, and and spoiler alert, they're not. Yeah, I think a lot of people were really worried about it getting too spammy or getting too uh, tab targety with the uh, changes to healing, um, which is a valid concern. I was a little bit concerned about that as well. And then they came out with those three pillars of combat, their vision for combat uh, in the article, in the accompanying article with these patch notes. And they clearly state in there that they, that that's not the case, uh, which which you're, you're right. I, it's incredibly reassuring. And to see those was very, very uh, pleasing to me for sure. So uh, I was I was very appreciative that they put that out as well uh, if you guys haven't read that article it's over on on uh, newworld.com uh, you should go check that out it's it's very reassuring for sure man i was excited to see that for sure or check out our youtube channel oh yeah it will just do that Boring. and then we go over the three pillars I, listen dude the entire articles over there you know hey, i'm just you know trying to it's also I, up on newworldfans.com it is. Unlike you, I'm just, you know, I'm trying not to to, to plug it every listen, five seconds. Listen, dude, yeah, listen, man, I'm your partner. You're, you're throwing shade on me. Uh, I won't stand for it. Uh, the, uh, okay. <laughs> uh, I'm shamelessly plugging our stuff. I understand that for sure. Uh, I digress. Okay, so uh, so the, here's some good changes that they've been making to, to kind of hit those visions that we're talking about. Uh, removed interruptions from light and heavy attacks for all weapons, dude. That is big because one of the things that was pretty frustrating in combat is when you're trying to attack and someone you know, interrupts your attack with a faster weapon, a.k.a. the hatchet, and then mm -hmm. completely stun locks you or you know, prevents you from mounting any sort of uh, retaliation 
or offense at that point. Yeah, it's a pretty big nerf to the hatchet right there for sure. That was the fastest weapon in the game, and I, I think that's going to that's gonna alleviate a lot of the hatchet spam we had going on in the preview event, that one change right there by itself, I think. For sure, for sure. Uh, light attacks now have chains or strings of attacks that accumulate in an ending attack, after which there will be a slight delay before the chain begins. And this is another kind of a semi-nerf to the hatchet because you can mm -hmm. no longer just spam light attack until your heart's content. You will be forced to hit an ending action, which will then create sort of some sort of delay. So obviously open up your window to be uh, attacked and also decrease your DPS. Yeah, absolutely. So you can no longer just sit there and spam, 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 which was the, the main culprit was the hatchet. I would imagine that at some point they're probably going to add. We've seen we've seen uh, two kind of, I guess, larger weapons. The spear wasn't real. I guess really not a... It's not really an incredibly fast one because it's like a two-handed spear. So we've seen two-handed spear. We've seen great axe come in. I would assume that at some point they're going to add some some uh, smaller, faster weapons as well, maybe some daggers or something uh, mm. I would hope would come into the game as well instead of just these huge weapons, something to kind of rival the hatchet. So when I think maybe this is laying the groundwork to be able to implement those things so that it's not uh, they're, they're not completely OP like the hatchet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and to save a little bit of face and not to, like, uh, you know, completely put off any hatchet users, uh, there's a little bit of a note for you guys. For all weapons except the hatchet, light attacks chain together twice. So you can only do two light attacks uh, before using that ending attack, I'm sure. Hatchets chain three light attacks together before resetting the chain. Uh, so you, uh, hatchet will get one extra light attack, which is, you know... Which should good. be fine because it's a lighter weapon. So think about hitting somebody three times with a hatchet versus hitting somebody two times with, with the, the big axe. hammer or the great axe. <laughs> yeah. So obviously that's going to do a lot more damage than the hatchet. So I think yeah. that that's fine. That's a that's that's good. And depending upon uh, one interesting thing to see if if the uh, delay between attacks is different for each weapon, which they didn't mention exactly in here, but it'll be cool to see. You know, if maybe uh, that also comes into effect as far as DPS or uh, you know how many attacks you can pull off is the delay yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. They'll have to mess with the balancing on all that for sure. I, I would imagine that's probably a, a work in progress would be my guess. Yes. Okay, so the number of frames for which a player is committed to their own light attack or heavy attacks, which means locked frames, meaning you cannot cancel, uh, animation cancel any of your, your ability or attacks, has been reduced, allowing players to head into their next action or ability more quickly. Uh, and this is a note they made. The patch notes has been updated to accurately reflect the change made in the release. Uh, there was some confusion, I guess. So adjusted input buffers so delayed actions would happen much less often, which was another complaint, I think, about uh, the combat, was not being able to feign or not being able to get out of a, a, a particular action or attack that you start. Uh, kind of create it feels like you're in less control of your character and and these input buffers should make a big difference there Bordy. yeah i think these input buffers are talking about having uh the way i was reading this is talking about having an ability so that whenever you swing you can press an ability and it kind of cues it up basically so then that ability goes off as soon as your other action is done that's okay, the way I was so this is the change that they made. I guess the first time I read it was a little bit different. Um, so here, let's read the change real quick. Input buffers are invisible systems that allow players to start inputting their next action before their current action is completed. As an example, if you press Q to use an ability right after you use the right mouse button to do a light attack... Uh, Wait, who uses the light right mouse button as a light attack? That's <laughs> okay, anyways, uh, your Q ability may execute a short... Uh, wait, what? May execute a short while after you push the button for it. Because... I just read that wrong. That's weird. Uh, I mean, should I read? Do you want me to read that? Hey, listen, man. <laughs> Keep going. You're doing a great you're job, about, You're about Keep to have going. a solo podcast here. Okay? Uh, execute a... a yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks, man. It sounds sincere when you say it like that. Uh, ability may execute a short while after you push the button for it because your character was still completing the previous action. Uh, the input buffer allows small windows of time where a next move can be queued to keep combat moving and feeling fluid. Today's update made the time window for each input buffer shorter so that you're less likely to wind up committing to a queued action that is no longer relevant due to changing battle conditions. All right, so 
one of the things, and, and, and again, these people kind of deserve being locked into 50,000 um, light attacks from the hatchet as they just continue to rapidly click their left mouse button. But mm -hmm. this is showing that you can get out of that quicker now. Uh, and and it feels more fluid. Like you're not, you know, going to be completely like doomed to light attacking till you're dead, basically, or you kill somebody. Yeah, and before and before, whenever you used an ability, the queue time was was really long. So like if you if you say you're light attacking and then you pressed your Q and then somebody else did did something and you instead you wanted to use your your a, a different ability other than your Q ability. Well, you were locked into using your Q ability for quite a while. So now uh, that input buffer's not, it's, it's reduced. So now you can light attack, use your, press your Q, but then you can press the other button instead and it'll use the other button, right? That's the way I'm reading this. Yeah. Yeah. So basically. So that you're not locked into, into, into using that ability. Yes. It, it allows you to correct your action. So if you, if you had yeah. hit a uh, light attack like three times, but you, you know, your ability comes off a cooldown. You can cancel the second or third light attack by hitting the Q button. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it's definitely a uh, good, good change. Any, any uh, fluidity of combat, especially when we're trying to inch towards a more fluid action filled combat. I think those like feigning and, and canceling, uh, not, no much, not so much animations. Cause I know people get angry with, uh, animation cancel mechanics and everything like that, but just being able to correct like a, an, a wrong input. So if you don't want to like hit, use your ability, you can maybe hit you hit your light attack and and save that cooldown or something like that. Yeah, which I'm glad you clarified there. This is not animation canceling. That's not yeah. what they're talking about here. They're 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 not talking about animation canceling at all, which it's people do get very canceling, very which is a lot different. Yeah. Yeah, it's a lot different. People get really triggered whenever you talk about uh, animation canceling and I'm not a huge fan of of animation canceling either. And as of right now, I don't think that's something that's that that they have uh, going, they have made some changes uh, to be able to adjust your abilities a little bit, and this is one of them. But I don't think any of them are are, are straight up like animation canceling no. changes. No, no, I don't think. So. And um, yeah, I think they they're working against. They don't want that sort of combat. Obviously, that yeah. you know, animation combat or animation canceling can be a very negative thing. I think communities do mm -hmm. not like that sort of like. Uh, way to improve your uh dps output or like you know your effectiveness yeah, in combat. i think it's just bad gameplay man yes I don't, I, I i'm not a fan of it either to be honest yeah i agree uh so uh reduce the uh, so here's another point where this is separate from that uh reduce the amount of stamina damage that light attacks do versus blocking and grit attacks uh, so that's a big, you know, obviously just reducing the amount of, uh, because, uh, you know, what's interesting is, uh, and they're mentioning here, when you attack somebody else, you do, uh, a certain amount of damage, but if someone's trying to block your attack, that damage is done to their stamina bar. So they have reduced the amount of damage that you do this to, um, the stamina bar. Basically. Yeah, because basically you could just block infinitely. If your light attacks, if your light attacks take them away, the same amount of stamina that your block does, if they're equal, then you, you're going to just light attack, light attack, light attack, and you're going to run out of stamina at the same time the other person runs out of stamina. You can just you can just block infinitely. So your blocking should take more stamina than your light attack, so that you can light attack through a block. Uh, I, I think it's the opposite of that. It reduces Reduce the, amount the amount of stamina of damage. damage. So you're, you, th how much it's reducing the amount of damage you're doing to the opponent's stamina bar. So it's allowing play, people, people to block damage. longer. Oh, I read that wrong. Yeah. Because, I don't know if I like that. That's stupid well, because now you can just inst in infinite block. No, I think there's uh, obviously mobility and, 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 uh, str strategic placing and everything there. But also I think there was a big problem that blocking wasn't really that, good of a plan before because i think a lot of people would just uh, like you'd kind of mentioned light attack spam until your uh stamina bar breaks and then you're basically in trouble because then you're you know you're cc'd without them having to use any cooldown or anything i think like that, that should be based on the shield you're wearing probably though. yeah and i'm sure I, and it will hopefully be that's uh, hopefully that's the case. Like if it's based on the shield you're wearing, then that's perfectly fine because a heat, obviously a big heater shield, the big shield we just looked at a second ago should uh, be able to block a lot of light, a lot more light attacks than something like a little buckler shield, you know? So hopefully that's the yeah, case. If I, that's I, the case, I think it's fine. I would hope so. I, I think, you know, cause it does uh, mention that in the shield tower, uh, 
breakdown or when it, the addition of the shield tower, it does mention uh, it can tank all but the greatest blows of your enemy. So hopefully there is some play in there because it does addition like uh, add your armor in addition to block chance. So I would hope that that plays yeah. into stamina yeah, you're right. usage it does in say that some earlier. way. Hopefully. I bet it does, man. I bet it does. And if that's the case, then that's, I think that's great. If that's the case, then, then it makes sense. If yeah, not, yeah. then it doesn't make sense at all to me, but you know, it's just me, I guess. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, you know, I'm not, never mind. I'm going to be nice to you, even though you're, uh, you know, I mean, you're you're not, ne- I mean, uh, nothing's ever stopped you before. I don't know what's um, stopping uh, you now. Myself. I'm stopping myself right now. Uh, good, good, good guy around. Okay. Yeah. 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 It's one of us has to be. This episode is going <laughs> south quickly. Uh, bl- uh, players can now consistently cancel out of light and heavy attacks to begin abilities sooner, immediately after the attack's active frames. Okay. So this is something. This just means I think that that you're going to be able to, um, you know, weave in abilities in a quicker time frame. Uh, from from you know, obviously your light and heavy attacks, uh, here. But this kind of I guess kind of does hint at being able to cancel some sort of uh, attack with an ability. Yeah, I didn't take this. It, I think a lot of people took this as animation canceling too, and that's not really how I took it. Uh, players can now consistently cancel out of light and heavy attacks to begin abilities sooner, immediately after the attack's active frames. So as soon as the, so it says yeah. immediately after the attack's active frame. So it's not like you can swing and cancel and just animation cancel your light attack. It's saying that you have to follow through with the active frame, and then you can cancel out of your next attack to use your ability. That's the way I took it. That way, uh, you know, if you're clicking left click too many times in a row or mistiming that, you can still cancel out of that to use an ability. Yeah, That's yeah, the yeah. way I took it. Yeah, and this, I think this is kind of an uh, add-on to what they were mentioning before, w- which they reduced the input buffer. Uh, del- yeah. So for the delay, you know what I mean? They, they approved it or improved it, excuse me. So then this is kind of speaking towards that. You're going to be able to use a second ability or attack quicker than you would have been able to before. Um, just, I, I mean, overall, I think these attempts uh, in general are to increase the the fluidity of combat and make it feel like, you know, it's more responsive and that you have more, um, you know, more influence over how your person attacks and what ability you use is at what time they do it, you know? Because I think one of the big complaints of the preview event was is it just kind of combat did feel a little bit um, unresponsive at times. When you know you were basically like either being attacked by somebody and just could not uh, mount a counterattack, and I also think that there on the offensive side of things, there were things where like you know you just your guy just keeps attacking even though you don't you know you you want to use an ability or you want to dodge or something like that. So this is just going to improve those feelings, hopefully, uh, in general. Yeah, I hope so, man. It's hard to say without actually getting in there and playing. You know, we're just reading the patch notes just like everyone else. So sure. just re- just based on reading the patch notes, it's hard to say. But on paper, these do, in my mind, look like good changes. So until I actually play and can feel, feel the changes in action, it's going to be hard to sit here and say these are, I, I feel like these are great or not, you know? Sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I agree uh, 100%. Uh, the second point, and this is something very similar to the last one, Players can now cancel out of light and heavy attacks to dodge sooner. A few frames after the attack, it's active frames, I've completed. So this is good, dude. I, again, we want combat that is responsive and that feels like the second to second is important, right? So, you know, especially dodging and, and, and those defensive abilities, uh, you know, they've also mentioned changes to blocking and making that more effective. I really think that this is an important pa- part of these type of combats because if the answer is like, I'm just going to keep light attacking until my opponent's dead, then combat sucks. But if they do have yeah. ways to like, you know, I'm going to light attack and then dodge behind and get, you know, get a backstab or something like that. If that becomes the more prominent or effective strategy, then you get to see some really cool, interesting combat, especially in PvP, man. Yeah, for sure. I, I think that the game needed some adjustments like this. And so, again, hopefully whenever we actually are, are playing, uh, you know, it, it feels a lot better. And again, we have to take these things with a grain of salt. They say sooner. They don't say like, you know, <laughs> these could be milliseconds for all we know at this point. Uh, so players can cancel out of certain abilities sooner. Players can cancel out of certain dodges sooner. 
can now cancel out of attacks to begin blocking sooner. Uh, remove the lock animation frames from blocking to allow uh, for more free-flowing combat. Which yeah, which I think is just the goal, right? I, I Like yeah. we said through the whole thing, the goal is just to have free-flowing, more fluid combat, and that's what they're shooting for. And whenever you tie all these changes into their vision that we were talking about earlier, it makes sense that they're implementing these changes. So we're just going to have to wait and see, man. It's going to be a wait and see and get in there and play and test it and see how, see how it feels type of game. But in my mind, I, it seems like they're pushing towards a more fluid combat which i'm all for yeah you know? they're gonna get continue to get feedback from the alpha players and and i i have no doubt that they're gonna keep tweaking this this isn't the final rendition of combat yeah. and they seem very focused on combat too which is really really good because if they can nail like the combat's good already but if they can perfect mm -hmm. it and and have it truly be like feel like multiplayer dark souls or on that mm -hmm. level I mean, the, be sky, the best combat in an MMO. Yeah, I think. dude, the sky's the limit for New World at that point because then you have the best combat system in any MMO ever. And and what we always say consistently because we cover a ton of MMO, you know, content is if if some uh, particular game can nail combat or has good combat, dude, that makes a big difference uh, in the you know the overall experience of the game of the players, uh, which is obviously important. For sure. All right. So uh, here is the the point. The rest of this uh, point is the ability uh, differentiation. So did I say that right? <laughs> no. Oh man. Differ <laughs> differentiation. Okay. Sure. I'm not gonna say that again. <laughs> uh, we have adjusted a number of abilities in attempt to give each a primary focus. The goal is for each ability to have a clear purpose, such as a sheer damage apply a status effect or crowd control or damaging an enemy's grit, etc. This is a, a really encouraging thing to see because a, a lot of, you know, it's good to see that they're drawing attention to abilities because I felt like a lot of the abilities on the, on the uh, initial seven weapons were very like watered down. And it was like almost every single weapon, there was like three abilities that you would use and then three that just like plain, like seemed useless. Or obviously, like way uh, inferior to the other three. Yeah, I would agree. It was pretty clear because pretty easy decision in my mind to pick the abilities that you wanted to use. I mean, obviously, whenever you're playing through there, you pick an ability and you try it out. I think that there was some very obvious abilities on every tree that were far superior to the, the, than the other ones. So it is good that they're looking at at the abilities. This specifically says that they want each ability to have a very clear purpose, as it should. I mean, why wouldn't you want if it's an ability, you would want it to have a clear purpose, right? You should be able to read the tooltip of the ability and be like, oh, that ability is going to add damage to my build or this is going to do this for my build or that to my build. I, I, you know, whereas I think before it was a little muddy on some of the abilities. So it's good they're looking at it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and it kind of goes back to like what you were saying about the the use of an ability. Like uh, this allows for a diversi diversification of builds if they can do this correctly. Which is like I I want to have a status effect build. I want to have like a you know a damage build or a crowd control build mm -hmm. or anything like that. Uh, you know those choices become important then, and instead of like well this ability just like is the best because it has you know damage plus it has a stun with it or you know the shield the sword and shield tree was a lot like that. The sword the sword abilities weren't necessarily the you know as important because of how strong the stun was and the you know the knockdown was in the shield tree so it was like you know i as much as i want to be cool and spin around and stab people uh it's stupid for me not to use this shield you know shield bash that's going to stun my enemy for four seconds like that's just yeah you want something that's going to synergize with your build better than just applying just than just having a, a an ability on there because it's strong it's the right. strongest ability to have you want something that synergizes and, and and makes your specific build better right right yeah. Which, uh, speaking of all these builds, Red, eh. uh, here comes my shameless plug. We do have a builder in the works that 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 should be finished by the time this game releases over on NewWorldFans.com. So now with all of these changes they are making, 
Uh, now, none of these changes obviously are implemented yet because this is alpha information. That's all of the very much very the, the very. Oh, my goodness. I'm talking like you, dude. All oh, of the specifics yeah. of all of this stuff is under NDA still. So obviously we can't have that over there. But we do have a builder that I think will be, uh, you know, very, uh, very useful whenever the game releases. Now that there's a lot of differentiation. Like there in that word differentiation. I, mean, I know what you're trying builds. to do, which is compensate yeah. for all those mistakes you made, and do that. <laughs> and then also, and then also plugging, which you shamed me for. I mean, man, hypocrisy uh, and, and in the flesh. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Uh, dude, hey. <laughs> all right. Uh, uh, wow, we're falling apart quickly. Uh, okay, so critical hit system part two. Uh, and we, you, hey, we called it, dude. I, you did. I, yeah. I'm pretty yeah. sure it was you. Hey. Uh, so updated backstabs and critical hit indicators to match the visual look of headshots. Uh, so it's basically the color change. Uh, headshots, I believe, were like orange, right, or or like a yellow orange yeah. when you hit. So the, mm-hmm. now crit shots will do that too. Awesome change. Any visual indicators yep. that that help players, I think, uh, provide positive feedback for like positioning and, and hitting crits and stuff is good. Yeah, added sound effects to help signal when crit hits happen, which is also cool. I, I like uh, the combination of the two. Obviously, we and we mentioned this, I think, maybe it was even last episode. You, we don't want to go overboard because of how, um, I think, um, New World's um, general combat feel is. We don't want a bunch of, like, DPS meters and, like, you know, all of that no, kind of stuff. No, I hope we don't so get th- any so of that. So this yeah. seems to be very minimal uh, as far as like... And I think you can actually turn that off, combat text off, to where you, it doesn't show numbers at all. And and if it isn't that way, I'm sure they'll eventually add a feature just to help with, uh, you know, the role-playing community as well as, uh, you know, just people being able to um, dive into to New World as a world and not maybe want to experience the combat um, numbers and stuff like that, so... Uh, targeted healing update. Uh, so they added a visual effect to, to highlight a player uh, to use uh, self-cast, obviously uh, highlighting other players as well. So now there's a visual appearance. Added options to the gameplay settings menu that allow players to customize their healing experience. Specifically, these settings allow players to refine their settings for how healing uh, for how healing spells are targeted and how the camera behaves when targeting another player for healing. So these are... Uh, I think if you're in the, uh, I guess you're in the boat of like having the, you know, the healing system being targeted and everything like that. I think these are really good changes. I know there are people that kind of oppose that. They don't want to, you know, they don't want any type targeting in the game at all. But I think specifically in healing uh, and Terra is one of the games that kind of pulled to my mind right now. You don't want it to be too difficult. Like, especially when like these people are already playing support characters and trying to, you know, Healing and tanking is usually like rare in in MMOs. Like most people want to play damage classes, so I'd hate. It's good to see that they're encouraging healing, right, or healing builds. And so I think well, these yeah, changes but, are good. Yeah, and we've talked about this before on one of our uh, other videos, uh, pretty in depth. So I don't want to go too too heavy. I think these targeting healing updates are fine. It's not that it's not that in my mind, it's not that healing is too hard because I think having difficult gameplay is fine. I think that healing was just ineffective. It was useless. Why would anybody be a healer in New World whenever you can't target the person you're trying to heal? Why wouldn't everybody just run around with health potions and and heal their self versus, you know what I mean, versus having a healer? Like the healing role, there wasn't really a healing yeah. role in New World. It didn't make sense. So now with these changes, there is a healing role, which is obviously the direction they're going. So I think these yep. things are are pretty necessary to the success of, the, of, of a healer in New World. Yep. I agree with you 100%, buddy. All right, uh, so there's some other balance changing to abilities and everything like that. I don't think we are going to go on uh, about that in this podcast. Just know that they made they made some changes to the bow and and uh, how the shield, uh, the perks work on the shield. Uh, go check out the official patch notes for more information on that. They also made some uh, UI changes, uh, tool tips. Um, they continue to pause UI. Uh, obviously, that's a work in progress, as in most games. Uh, especially in development. So they're working on that. So progression, here's here's something that's, I think, interesting. So adjusted the level curve from 1 through 10 to better match the pace of quests. Uh, they rested, rested experiences so that it now starts accumulating after 12 hours instead of 8 and occurs at a 2% per hour rate 
So that was decreased from 2.5. So they just nerfed rested XP basically and reduced XP from PVP missions by 10%. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Uh, Whenever I read that, I was very confused. I, I still am confused about that change. Like, why are we reducing XP missions? I, I think yeah. maybe they were just overtuned, and so people were just running uh, PvP missions to level up instead of instead of for the reason intended, which is to undermine territory. I, I don't know. I don't know the reason behind that change, but I would like to see more encouragement for PvP instead of discouragement sure. and reducing sure. it. You know, maybe this was a good change. I, I don't know. I don't. I just don't like to see anytime there's like a, uh, a kind of a negative connotation associated with PvP. It, it puts a bad taste in my mouth. So hopefully there was a good, and I'm sure there was a good reason behind it. I just I want there to be good open world PvP. I don't want that to go away in this game. So yeah, and I think I think your first point was probably closer to the correct one. Is that they 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 were probably overtuned and and people maybe I guess felt like that. Um, that was the only way to level, right? People don't want to be forced into doing <laughs> PvP probably. missions, so they probably that was just probably a correction to kind of change that. Also, um, dude, uh, just in general, they seem to be slowing down leveling as a whole. Uh, from recent patch notes, they just continue to dial back on the amount of XP you gain in literally anything in the game. Uh, so that was relative to the feedback uh, from the preview event, of course, but people were able to get max level in a week which isn't necessarily a good look for an MMO either. Uh, so we'll see how where they land on these things. Obviously, I'm with you. I don't want to see them like disincentivize PvP at all, but I think this is more like in tune with like, we've literally nerfed every other XP uh, source in the game, so we need to dial down PvP missions as well. Yeah, and you're probably right. I mean, I'm sure that's probably the case. I just, you know, I'm biased towards PvP. I want there to be good PvP in the game. That's really what piqued my interest of New World in the first place. And the combat's so fun. It makes the PvP really fun. And I just don't want to see anything that waters that down. Yeah. Yep. All right. So the last mo note in these patch notes is uh, the economy. So in this patch, we, we made a set of item changes to pave the way for future crafting system changes. Mm -hmm. We've added in new gathering milestones, resources, and crafting regions. In a future update, we'll talk more about how these item changes fit into the overall crafting vision, dude. That's a nice little teaser, dude. I really think so because, you know, uh, the crafting and gathering thing is a very important part uh, to New World. And it's it's cool to see that that they are not forgetting that uh, side of the community or uh, that side of players, dude, they're going to seem to add some pretty exciting new features uh, soon. Well, man, I think having a strong economy in an MMO is one of the pillars that makes an MMO successful. I think, I think all of the combinations of PVP, PVE, and just having a good economy and a good trading system. There's so many people. There's a large demographic of MMO players who really enjoy just playing the economy in an MMO, mm -hmm. and even people that like to PVP and PVE. I mean, I even like to have a good economy. It sucks whenever you're playing an MMO and there's not a good economy in there. So I'm very yeah. happy that they are that they're addressing this. I'm not a huge crafter myself. But I think for the overall health uh, and, and future of the game, this needs to be looked at. And I'm really glad that they are. Yeah, I ditto. I, you know, if the, if the auction, because they really like the only thing in the game right now are the, uh, you know, the trading posts or, or in each town, they're not even linked together. You can't buy things from other trading posts. So it's just very important for each individual uh, settlement to have it as uh, like a independent, uh, uh, economy like you mentioned and, and that it's hard enough to do one good economy in an mmo but to have like you know however many different um territories they end up with in the launch product they literally have to find a way to make each one of those uh, economies uh at least somewhat viable uh, because you you know you want reasons to own uh those those uh territories so uh we'll see man and, and it's just exciting uh, again that they are looking at that side of the economy, the crafting and gathering side uh, as well. So, mm -hmm. Absolutely. All right, brother. Well, that about does it. Uh, why don't we go into the company of the week? Yeah, man. The company of the week, the Clover Kingdom, a new company, I think, that just signed up uh, over here on New World Fans. The Clover Kingdom, they're one of New World's newest and largest upcoming network of companies that form one large powerhouse to be reckoned with. So apparently this is a lot of a lot of companies kind of uh, banding together to make just a, a powerhouse company. So it sounds like you're going to have a lot of people to play with. They are currently rec recruiting. Their faction is Marauders. They're an English speaking company. They're 
focuses on PVX. They're kind of wanting to do everything in the game. Uh, it says if you're familiar with Black Clover, this is definitely for you. Our main company is known as the Clover Kingdom. They have multiple squads that branch off of that one. So apparently there's there's a lot of a lot of different companies. It's kind of like a big gaming community. Apparently they have their Discord down there. They say 18 plus uh, is preferred. They want a very mature uh, a very mature group of people to play with, and uh, they just want to have want to have a good time in game. Uh, so I'll make sure all of those details are linked below in the YouTube description and then all the podcast descriptions as well. All right. Well, we appreciate them for for going over to New World Fans and creating a company. Um, post over there. If you guys have a company that you want to uh, promote um, and show off on the podcast, definitely go create one uh, over at newworldfans.com and uh, you have a chance to be on the podcast. Uh, and so we appreciate you guys for doing that. Uh, Bordy, uh, that does it for another episode, man. Episode 46 in the books. Why don't you tell, tell where people can find you on the internet? Yeah, man. Twitter at the BDLG. YouTube is now youtube.com slash studio loot. Let's go, dude. That's where we're creating YouTube content at. And then Twitch is twitch.tv slash BDLG. And I'm Redbird with a Y. You can find me at Twitch is where we record these episodes live. You can go also, dude, go uh, check out the YouTube channel. Uh, we, we put a lot of work in there. We're very proud of it. So we hope you guys don't mind going over there, throwing a sub. Uh, and and uh, consuming our content, including VODs of this podcast. So check that out. Also, follow the Twitter of Studio Loot. We appreciate it, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching, listening, and everything you do to support us. We really appreciate it. Also, uh, going to New World Fans, uh, the website as well. Our buddy Taken uh, does a lot of work over there. Um, so we appreciate him as well. Thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it or listening, whatever you're doing. And we'll see you in another episode of New World to Go.